Hey everyone, it's Q&A Tuesday. First question I'm gonna go with today, and it's really not a question, it's a comment, but a gentleman that goes by the name of HC on YouTube. And he's not the only one that has commented this on my previous video, specifically on the What's On My Desk series. Interesting content, but why do you throw those beautiful timepieces around? Perhaps you won't damage them, but it doesn't seem like you're taking very good care of your inventory that you presumably intend to sell. I wouldn't wanna buy a watch that has been tossed around like that. So for those of you that watch the What's On My Desk series, you guys notice I usually use this tray to have the watches on top. Now this tray is padded, it's extremely soft, it won't scratch anything. So by me bouncing those watches down onto the tray, I do not do anything bad to those watches. Furthermore, if I were to take a watch and bounce it on that tray and something went wrong with the watch, then shame on that watch because these watches are designed to withstand a decent amount of impact. The overall sound effect that you hear by these things banging on a desk is the fact that I work uh, out of a professional setup studio. I think I showed that in one of my videos before in terms of lighting, sound, and everything else. And this lavalier mic that I pulled out purposely, you guys can see, picks up that sound. So it sounds like I'm really banging these watches, but I'm really not. Dropping a watch from a distance of two to three inches onto a soft padded tray does nothing to those watches. So don't worry, my inventory is perfectly fine. Just wanted to address that, get that out there for those guys that are concerned about this. Let's dive into some questions. So the next question is from a gentleman by the name of Hassan Aripov. Hi Roman, spasiba for your great videos. Uh, my question is regarding stretching on the braces such as a Jubilee braces. If it's an 1803 Rolex or similar, is it worth fixing it? And if yes, who would be the right person to do it and how much would it cost? Thank you once again. Actually, a simple answer to this, yes, there are people out there that will fix a stretch bracelet. It's usually not worthwhile having somebody else do it because it's a very tedious process. They literally take the entire bracelet apart. They put it back together link by link, squeezing the links together, and therefore making the bracelet tighter. Usually the people that do that are those that sell vintage Rolexes. It's worth their while to sit there and put those bracelets together in order to make their watches a better condition or a bracelet condition. So a lot of times people will take a Rolex and they'll sort of hold it sideways and see how much stretch the bracelet has. And Jubilee bracelets are notorious for that. What I suggest is going out there and actually picking up a pre-owned bracelet. You can find a slew of them online. There's a lot of people out there selling Rolex parts, specifically bracelets, specifically Jubilee bracelets. This may be people that have taken an older Jubilee bracelet, bought it for nothing pretty much because they're worthless once they stretch out completely probably put it back together, make it tight again, and they resell them at a profit. And that's probably your best bet, is to get out there and just simply replace the braces. And furthermore, if you find a guy that's selling them, see if he'll take your old bracelet and trade, and will give you a new tighter band. It should cost you in the realm of $1,000, and if you trade in your older bracelet and get a few hundred dollars credit for that, there you have it. Definitely not worth finding a watchmaker out there that's gonna tighten your braces, because they will charge you an arm and a leg. Hope that helps. Next question is from Bang Chiat. Again, I apologize if I didn't get your name. Like to protect Philippe, problem is I have a small wrist. My question then is, what is the smallest the strap can go? Most manufacturers will have a small, a medium, and an extra long strap. Unfortunately, they don't make extra small straps. However, there's a ways to play with this. Me personally, I have a small wrist, and oftentimes I find myself having to order a short strap. Now, when you order a short strap from flu of the manufacturer, whether it's Patek Philippe or whether it's uh, Audemars Piguet or any other brand, for the most part, you should have enough holes in that strap in order to fit your wrist. Now, in a case where you have an extremely small wrist where the short strap is just not too short, unfortunately, your only option is either to go with an aftermarket strap for your watch where somebody will custom make the size for you, and there's a slew of guys out there online, you can find them, or simply take an existing strap and drill a little hole in it. And the way I do it is I take an actual drill and I literally take a little tiny drill bit because punching a hole is gonna make it look ugly, and I literally drill through the strap, whether it's leather, rubber, or whatever it might be. That's really the easiest way to do it. <laughs> Here's a really funny one from a gentleman, Cat Cat 4,000 or 40,000? Anyway, great stuff as always, Roman, thank you. Uh, what do you think of oversized or large watches, 43 millimeter plus on guys with smaller wrists? If you see, let's say, a random five foot five skinny guy wearing a 44 millimeter AP Summer Edition, would you first think, wow, he's a douche, 
or his watch game is on point. Well, let me be honest with you. I am a, I am a skinny guy with a small wrist. I'm a little bit taller. I'm six foot tall, but I only weigh about 165 pounds. And no matter how much I go to the gym and work out, I'm one of those scrawny guys that will never be huge. And I wear oversized watches. I've worn the Legacy, which is 48 millimeters. I've, I've worn Concept watches, which are way too big on my wrist. I wear Audemars on a regular basis, and you mentioned the AP Summer Edition. In reality, it's small on me. Right now, I have it at 39 millimeter Royal Oak, and even this is a bit too big on me, if you ask anybody. But I don't care, and the reason I don't care is because I like to wear what I like to wear, and personally, I don't give two about what anybody thinks of me. Now, are there gonna be guys out there that are gonna call you a douche and say, look at this tiny guy with a huge ass watch? Yes, but most guys are not gonna say that. Most guys are gonna be like, wow, he's got on the summer edition. So if you want the summer edition, get out there, buy it. Don't worry about how big your wrist and what it looks like on yours. So as long as you're happy with it, who cares what everybody else says? Oh, let's see. Here's a good one, uh, assumably from a watch dealer. The name is uh, Kibble Watches. Great series. And as an inspiring watch dealer, your videos are priceless. Keep them coming, thank you. Uh, my question is, how long did it take you to build up a reputation? What were the main factors that contributed to this? What advice would you give someone starting in the industry now? Oh, there's so much stuff I can tell you and so much advice I can give you as a starting out dealer. I'm gonna give you one and best advice that anybody can get. If you guys remember the movie Tony Montana, remember the good old scene when he was talking to the guy in Colombia? All I have in this world is my balls and my word, and I don't break them for no one. Well, just that. Balls and your word. Your word in this industry is extremely important, and by word I mean your reputation. Part of the reasons I've been so successful in this industry, and my company has been so successful in this industry, is because of our reputation. And the way you build your reputation is by keeping your word. If you're gonna do something, say something. If you're gonna commit to something, make sure you go through with it and you buy it, no matter if it may be a mistake or not. Do as you say, keep your word, and this is the way you're going to build your reputation. Today, uh, and our industry is a funny industry, you know, a lot of times you tell people about how industry works, especially on the wholesale level, they either think you're crazy or you're lying to them. I can walk from Fifth Avenue to Sixth Avenue on 47th Street, and I can literally stop by 30, 40, or 50 places. By the time I get down to Sixth Avenue, I can have $10 million of merchandise in my bag that I can simply take on my word without signing any single piece of paper. And I got that through years in the business and again through reputation. Reputation is the most important thing in our industry. People trust you on your word, not on the piece of paper that you sign because at the end of the day you can sign whatever you want. If you decide to screw somebody, you can do so. That is the most important factor in our business. Reputation is one of those very, very few things that you cannot buy. So have some balls and keep your word. Well, guys, that's going to do it for today's Q&A Tuesday. I want to thank you once again for tuning in. Uh, remember, these episodes are only possible because of you guys, because you guys are watching, you guys are asking me questions, and you're giving me material to answer them. So please keep the questions coming. If you like this video, as usual, make sure you hit that like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys on the next Q&A Tuesday.